This is Dabu 7, and we are in the midst of a major water war that's going to feed into food and economic prices. It's going to affect everything. And as an update here, I want to share with you here some information coming from the farmers in Idaho that are facing getting their water shut off here and let you hear from them exactly what's going on here. And then I'll give some thoughts afterwards. Hey, Christopher, do you see this? See what? Well, we just got our curtailment letter from the Idaho Department of Water Resources, and they're telling us we have to shut our eight wells off. Shut our water off? What for? Oh, just a bunch of ridiculous stuff. Let's talk about it. Okay. So this is a letter that we just got. We weren't. Th we didn't think we were going to be affected by this curtailment because most of our farm ground, all these sprinklers going back over here, most of our farm ground is surface water through canals. We do have eight wells, but two of them are emergency wells. And I think we, we've converted, I think, three more, two or three more over to surface water. But we do use three, two, three wells. We use three wells to water our crops. So they want us to shut our water off. This is from the Idaho Department of Water Resources. And they want us to turn our wells off. And it's not just us. So the Idaho water curtailment is affecting about 500,000 acres of farmland here in Idaho. Mm. So the problem is, and why this curtailment is happening, is because down in Twin Falls, there's the Twin Falls Canal Company. And they were getting a little short of water. So in 2015... They came up with an agreement of how much water the well users, the ground, the ground water users could use. So they were short 74,000 uh, acre feet of water, and they were short that in 2021. So from 2015 clear up to 2021, we were putting way more. It was more than double the amount of water we were using. We were putting back in the aquifer. Well, 2021 came along and there was a drought and that drought caused us to use more than we, well, we used the same amount, but because there was less water that year, it was a hot, dry year. We weren't able to put as much back into the aquifer and that's when they were short. So 74,000 acre feet is essentially 12 and a half days of water in their canal. So this canal that's down there, it serves, it waters 200,000-ish acres, and I think there's about 5,000 customers. Well, because they were short, 12 and a half days of water, they want to shut off 500,000 acres of water and 6,400 customers' wells. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Some would say that is very crazy. Others saying we are in a war. In a battle here. Amongst the people here in the United States, and this goes beyond the United States as well, in terms of this water war. You just heard from the farmers there how they're battling people within their own state in different treaties and compacts that were put into place in modern times. Well, when it comes to the United States all the way around, this goes back... A long time, all the way back to 1944, I believe, where the United States and Mexico had a treaty put into place about water. And this treaty was supposed to be upheld by both sides, around 80 years old, they say, uh, this treaty. But with all of the droughts, similar to the situation they were just talking about there on the farms, whenever there is a drought, it plays big on the treaty because under the treaty, Mexico is required to send the United States 1.75 million acre feet of water every five years. Water that they get from the Rio Grande, which is renamed down there, I do believe, to the Rio Bravo. Now, in return, the United States is sending 1.5 million acre feet of water to Mexico from the Colorado River every year. 
So 1.5 million, 1.75 million is a pretty close numbers there. But Mexico is only sending that much every five years. We're sending it every single year. Now, with drought conditions, Mexico is saying they can't give what they don't have. And this is straining conditions all over the place, all along the border, within Mexico, in areas like Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, the Four Corners region out there. And this is affecting, as we just saw, all the way up in the areas like Idaho now, as they extend this. They are saying that if this continues, the crops will be decimated. This will decimate the economy, all the jobs, and everything in between. And it seems this is what somebody wants in this battle. And we cannot let it happen. But this is being fought on, on multiple fronts, coming from different avenues. And I think it's time people pay attention to this and you start to do something to mitigate the damage. You may want to want to think about water catchment and things of, of that nature. And if you're even in a state that allows it, as crazy as that sounds, mm. if you're in a state that allows you to survive. Yeah, well, this is where we're at. Join me for the live streams Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern, where I cover this and a whole lot more. And make sure to stop by my channels on X and on YouTube to see if I'm dropping anything fresh, because they're probably not going to send you a notification for my stuff. Much love, y'all. Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Yashallah. We'll start off first things first, but all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakadash, which in the Pele Hubitan, Scranated Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, double honors to the apostles, elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to you, sisters and brothers that's laboring in this truth, and Shalom to your brothers and sisters that's listening and studying to show yourselves approved. Shalom. Now, as we just heard from the whistleblower, Dabu 7 7, and it was so spiritual when I seen that because what did it say? Water wars. You got the government and farmers fighting over water, which should be common sense. Farmers need water. Let them water the crops. But see, when you understand prophecy and you understand the big picture of what's going on, it's, it's the government creating the fame that the Lord called for. That's all it is. Because this is just like retarded when you really look at it. Farmers need water to water their crop. So why are you going to Kirk tell farmers, especially this is a showcase in Idaho. You know, one thing I know about Idaho, they make what? Potatoes. Most of the Babylon the Great America's potatoes come from Idaho. You've seen these two Edomites talking about how much, you know, acres they got, how much they grow. You know, so the, this is a government mandate. Going to find them for using water to water their crops. They want to discourage them from watering their crop because they want to create a famine you know the food gonna be short you know they're gonna get rid of cows chickens uh calling it the bird flu pork gonna get thrown in there too they'll say all oh, swine flu done pop back up and what esau edom is doing which is so-called white man because this is their diabolical plot you know and they're only doing that through the spirit of the lord they're going to create a famine where they're only going to be the ones the government's going to have all the food kind of like how they do the food stamp program they're going to have all the food Ain't going to be no Walmarts and, and Crochers and, you know, uh, whatever little, you know, food market you got in your state. They're going to have the food and they're going to issue it out based on you taking that mark of the beast, that MOTB, that microchip. If you don't take the microchip, they're going to say, well, we ain't got no food, no water, you know, no safety for you. So farmers and like I like how this how he worded that the whistleblower water wars. Because you already know, y'all sure what the farmers are going to do. They're going to fight back. This is going to be a war. It's going to be a war over food. Farmers are like, you got me messed up. I'm not about to lose no money. I'm trying to feed America. And then you already know these farmers, they got swords. They got guns. We're going to go into second edges territory. They're going to fight back. They already done did that in Germany. You know, they're fighting with the government. So this isn't just isolated to Babylon the Great. This is worldwide. They're doing that. So I just want to highlight this because this is not getting mainstream news like it should. Everybody want to talk about Trump and 
all kinds of stupid little entertainment. But I'm like, this should be breaking news. But they want people to know that. So feel good, y'all, Charlotte, that we're here getting, you know, fed with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We know what's going on. So when it hits, you know, we won't be, oh, my God, they didn't cut this off. And I like how you said, uh, if your state allows it, because I found out certain states won't allow you to collect rainwater on your land, which to me, that's that's straight up, that's wickedness, man. How the heck I, I got some land, I pay taxes on the land, and you're going to tell me I can't collect water on it. Is you crazy? Man, Esau is crazy, man. So, enough of me a little talking right there. I just want to give an overview of what's going on. Let's get to the scriptures, because this is what's happening. You know, because we're going to be going to some real rough times, and people that's still caught up in the world entertainment, they're not going to be ready for this. So check it out. This is going to start a war, too. This is going to be a lot of bloodshed, because these farmers are going to fight for that land they got. They've been farming. These are generational farmers. They're going to tell the government, you got me messed up, man. You getting uh, tyrannical. So I got to use my sword, and I got to blam, blam, blam. So this is second Edris, 16 to 17. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? Ooh, what type of days? Let's go to verse 18. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings. The beginning of famine and great death. The beginning of wars. We just seen water wars. It's going to be food wars. Uh, you got, man, all kind of wars, man. Russia getting it popping. China uh, getting it popping. And you just talk to North Korea. It's going to be wars, man. All out wars. It's going to be civil war. If they keep cutting these farmers' ability to feed they, uh, water their crop, then they're going to fight. That'll be a war. And it says the power should stand in fear. You know, you're going to have a lot of politicians scared. A lot of people, they got a lot of big money going to be scared because this thing about to get real ugly. And the beginning of evils, because that's evil, man. Real evil right there. They, they're looking to starve people out because they got it on the Georgia Guidestones. They want to put the population back to 500 million, which means they're about to kill billions of people. And how they going to do it? Starving them out by the sword. And it says, what shall I do in those? These evils shall come. We know what to do. The worldly people ain't going to know what to do. We're going to pray on the Lord. You know, what's we'll that? Proverbs 18, 10. The Lord's name is a strong tower. We're going to run into it. Be safe. Plus, when you serve the Lord, which I'm going to go get there. You serve the Lord. The Lord said, I'm going to feed my whole free elect. But the worldly people, all the people that have scoffed at the prophets, you know, scoffed at your high about you, shot, all that'll never happen. You know, you still got a lot of prideful jakes that still put their trust in Babylon the Great America. They're going to be ones that's going to be messed up in these evil times. And they're going to be real messed up. They're like, I, I, I was a good nigga. I did everything the white man wanted me to do. And look how he doing me. So the shame going to cover them. Stupidity going to cover them. Because they trusted in their enemy. And Esau going to flex on them and show them how much of a devil he is. And they going to feel, you know, they're going to feel real dumb. They'll feel like fools. Because we've been out there, you know, uh, week in, week out, uh, putting out lessons, telling them, man, hey, like, watch me. The, the sword is coming. Fame is coming. We've been telling them that. And they tell us, man, shut up, you little broke nigga. You a broke nigga. You know, that's what they say to us. We, All right. You know, when it hit, we're going to laugh at their calamity. And one thing Esau going to do, you know, Babylonians are used to eating a lot. A lot of people eat for comfort over here in America. You know, they comfort eat, especially uh, Eve. She love to snack a lot. Es Esau about to take that away, which I, I can't get credit to Esau like that. I'm going to get credit to your how about you have a shot. He going to take that away. He's just using the wicked people he created to do it. <laughs> That's it. Eve going to get a wake-up call. Two-thirds Jake going to get a wake-up call. They like, oh, shoot. The white man is the devil. But then it's going to be too late. You know, because now the evils is already here. So I'm going to read uh, verse 19. Behold, fame in. And plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Lord, about the men, all the wrongdoings. How you gonna do it? He just said right there: famine, plague, tribulation, and anguish. A lot of people are gonna be angry, man. They're gonna be upset when they find out. Oh, Esau is gonna throw them off the land. What they call the enemy domain? Just take your land, uh, put you in camps, and tell you you can't get no food unless I put this device in your body. There's gonna be that microchip. You can't eat. And he ain't going to give you no chicken, no steak. No. That's just to eat some bugs. This devil want people eating bugs, <laughs> you know. And for some, some little clean water, he, he going to, you know, put a, a, a mark of the beast in you. Because that's where this is going. That's what it's all about. This devil wants full control. And he's doing this because he's going to try the children of Israel to see who belongs to Yahweh Shah 
and who, you know, is is, is missile fodder. And fame is going to be a big part of that, man. Most Babylonians are not used to going, shit, they ain't used to going five hours without eating. You know, most people, they, they got to eat all the time, all these delicacies. You know, everybody take that all away. And we see the, the mark of that. The, the potatoes, man, you need potatoes to make a lot of other type of food. So if the potatoes get taken away, a lot of, you know, stuff on the plate going to get taken away. And see, this ain't going to hit the two-thirds until it's, like, affecting them. We see this coming, like, already down the line. Like, oh, okay, you know, start getting ready. I like how you said uh, if you can collect water on your, on your property, go ahead and do so. So, you know, we get prepared. All that. That's not going to help anyway. I think about it. He saw to show up with his military troops and be like, oh, you collecting water, you get fined, or, you know, he might just do something to you for doing that. So we're going to need the Lord. The Lord is the only way to escape this. It's not going to be your, your prep skills. It's not going to be, I got this, I got that, MREs. None of that is going to work, man. You're going to need your how about your, your shot. Your how about your how shot. You know, you're going to need that. You're going to need them. Point blank, period, to make it through this. Because ain't no telling where we're going to be at. Ain't no telling you're going to get snatched up in the camp. You know, you might not be where all your stuff you done stash is at. So I'm going to go get. Matter of fact, before I get to that, let's go to. uh, Let's hit 2nd Edge 16 22. It says, For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish with famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So, Lord, whoever he don't like, whoever he's marked for judgment, for death, Hey, they're going to get hit, man. Either they're going to starve to death or Esau going to put a bullet in them. Point blank, period. <laughs> Either way it go. You will not escape this. Uh, like I said earlier, there's only one way to escape this. And that's through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So, us and this truth, man, we're not worried about it. Because of precepts like this. And this is why we serve the Lord, man. A lot of us brothers have jumped in this truth because we don't read stuff like this. And this is Isaiah. 65 and 13. Therefore, thus said the Lord Yahweh, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. That's going to happen. That's why, you know, Lord willing, we part of the hopeful elect. This is why we serve the Lord. We want to eat. We want to drink. And we don't want to be ashamed when, you know, the scourges come in, when the famine come in, when the war come in. We wouldn't be like, I serve the Lord. And when the Lord starts showing us that favor, you know, take care of us, uh, feeding us, you know, we're going we gonna to be satisfied. While the two-thirds are going to be ashamed. They're going to be begging us and we might see them, hey, man, let me get some of that chicken you eating on, man. Hey, and I'm, I'm going to be real harsh. I ain't going to lie to you, y'all, sure. I'm be like, nah, man. Whatever, when everything was all good, did you serve the Lord? That's what I'm going to ask them. I'm like, hey, man, what's the Lord's name? They, they don't know. Or I'm be like, man, what, what works did you do? They, psh, hey, man, get your judgment. Hey, man, the Lord might do it so cold where people that, you know, talk bad about us for being in this truth, you know, mocked us. They would be the ones asking us for, you know, food and provisions, <laughs> you know, with, with a, a microchip in their hand. Because Esau not going to take care of them. He just want them to get chipped. Just because you get chipped does not guarantee you're going to eat. This devil is wicked, man. He just want to, you know, he wants you to throw away your salvation is what Esau wants you to do. You know, but he said, my servant shall rejoice. So we will be rejoicing when the Lord show us that favor, man. We're going to feel real good about the work we did, the sacrifices we made to be in this truth. It's all going to pay off, man. Lord willing, we're part of the hopeful elect. But when you see that favor, oh, you go to rejoice. You know, we're going to be calling the names of the Lord, calling on the name of the Lord real hard in them days. <laughs> you know, because then, hey, the, the faith is going to be fulfilled. You know, we're going to be banging on our chests, man, like gorillas. Like, oh, yeah, Lord took care of me, man. I'm... I'm full. So I'm gonna, let's go to Job. We we'll probably leave off with this. I just want to do a quick little, little watchman lesson. Show you, man. These, these devils about to cut that water off, man. Let's start off with Job five and nineteen. It says, "And he should deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee." Yeah, you see that six troubles. That seven trouble represents them ICBM nuclear missiles. The Lord said, "What? No evil shall touch thee." So, brothers, Lord willing, we part of hopefully we get on them chariots. Ain't no, ain't, ain't no missiles gonna touch us. And then you go to verse twenty. It says, "In famine he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword." 
So famine and the sword, you know, Esau's military ain't going to touch us if we're part of the whole elect. It's not going to touch us. We're going to be good. It says, verse 21, Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Woo, we going to hide us from all this evil. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. And that's true. Because right now, I'm, I'm not afraid of all the destruction that's coming right now. Like, I'm not afraid of it. I'm like, it needs to happen. You know, I feel good about my lot. And we'll see when everything unfolds. But as the destruction's coming, you know, I did I did a couple of lessons to show you, like, all the emails from a job are flipping out. They're afraid of this coming destruction. I mean, straight up terrified. And I'm looking like, man, this ain't bothering me at all. This is really making me feel good because I know... My Lord and Savior, how is quickly on the way? So that precept's already coming in the fold right there. We're not afraid. Two thirds are afraid. They are, I'm talking about scared, because these dummies is just not figuring out the World War III about to pop off. They just not far, starting to figure out stuff that we've been talking about for years. It's just not hitting them because the effects are starting to be known. So verse 22. And destruction and famine, thou shalt lie. Neither should I be afraid of the beasts of the earth. So that's the best A. Hey, it's best to be in this truth. You got the best seat in the house. Because the Lord said what? When famine comes, we're going to laugh. Why are we going to laugh? Because we're going to be well fed. We're going to be good. We're going to be somewhere where food is plentiful. So we're going to laugh, man. And we're going to see how these niggas in their little camps. You know, we might be somewhere and we get to see them. They're going to be in camps looking crazy. Still uh, having hunger pains, even though they took that micro CHIP, getting did in by Esau, you know, gun butted and stuff of that nature. We're going to laugh. Like, see, dummy, you should have served the Lord. I tried to tell you, and you said I was crazy, and uh, I'm just a broke, angry nigga. I'm racist. You know, they, they say all them kind of things about us. But when the things start to unfold out, the Lord said we're going to laugh at them. They laughing at us now. But when this destruction come in, it's going to reverse and we're going to laugh at they butts. And I'm going to laugh hard, y'all, Strala. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm going to laugh hard at them. Because they laughing hard at us now. I get clown hard and heavily in my family. But wait till all this stuff start to really manifest. And we're going to be laughing at them. And I'm gonna, he's going to put a, a cold spirit on us, man. We're going to see family members. I'm not about to hey, throw them or flip them a, a chicken drum. Or flip them some mashed potatoes? No. I told your ignorant dumb but to serve the Lord while we all had liberty. You said I was racist and hateful and all kind of little crazy little stuff. And you wanted to put your trust in Esau? So, no. This is your judgment. And I'm going to laugh at your butt. I'm going to laugh at him. That's what I'm going to laugh. <laughs> you know? Because we done told you to get right. Because we, we tell you what Esau about to do. And it should be very visible on what they're doing. But they're under, like the scripture said, they strong delusions. I be looking at them like, God damn, you still ain't got a clue? Here it is, 2024, all this stuff is happening. And you still over there holding faith in Esau eat them. I'm going to laugh at you. You know, I got a lot of people in my family that's like well off with money. And, and they look down on us in this truth. You know, uh, I get called broke a lot. They be all like... Well, if you quit hating the white man and serve the white man, you have some money like me. And they, you know, count their money. You know, they flexing. And I'm like, okay, okay. I'm just waiting on my, my, my time. Lord willing, I'm part of the whole food elect. Make sure my, my call in the election is sure. And it's going to reverse. And I'm going to tell them what they told me. I'm like, nah, man. Go to that white man for that food you need. Go to Esau. You know, and you probably you already know they're gonna get the cut. Oh man, you ain't looking out for family. You you use a bitch ass you nigga. That's that's whole ass shit. That ain't it. They gonna try to hit you with a precept. That ain't you, the Bible say look out for your family. The Bible say have love in your heart. You know you are gonna hear a little crazy stuff like that. <laughs> you know, and uh, we just got to cut them up. Like nah, man, you get your judgment, man. You you want to trust the Esau, and, and there you go. He starved you out. You know, took the MOTB. He still didn't give you no food. You know, we're going to mock them like, nigga, you's a fool. You's a, a dumbass. Look how that devil did you. And I'm like, look what the Lord did for me. I'm over eating good. And you not. So we're going to get our time, y'all. Just be, you know, just be patient. Uh, stay locked on this truth. 
Because uh, we, we definitely going to get our time. Because you see now, like I said, it said water wars. These devils about to start banging over water. The ability to water their crop. They're going to go to war about that. And I'm like, that is straight madness to me. But it's prophecy. And, you know, hey, I mean, what you expect from Esau eating the devil? Well, I mean, only thing you should expect is evil stuff. That's evil. Tell you, you can't water your own crop on your own land. Psh, these people about to put the power in their own hands. <laughs> they about to bang on the government, you know. They don't care what they got to say. They don't care what Joe Biden or whoever's in office, Trump or whatever, I ain't gonna care what they got to say. I'm about to water my crop. And I got the shotgun on my tractor with me. You know, bring your little troops and we're gonna see what's up. So, hey, keep an eye on this, Josh Rodder, because this thing about to heat up. This is gonna be farmers versus the government. War. War is coming. All our war. Food wars. It's coming. So, with that, man, I hope this has been edifying. I hope it's been informative. I wanna say, Quam Josh Allah. Hey, stay locked in because your house shots quickly on the way. Shalom.